Good morning. Welcome to episode 17 of the Royal Bee Yarn Company. This is my wife, <laughs> Kelly. And what's so funny? It just, it's just so official. Like you remembered the episode number and then you're like, this is my wife, Kelly. Let's start again. You can remember her from such episodes as 16. And 12. And, and 12. And 12. <laughs> But we're, uh, we own our own yarn shop here in Pacifica, yep. California. It is yep. hot today. It's hot. It's really, it really hot. hot. It's hot. It's hot. hot. And we really don't even have, oh. like, <laughs> we don't have anything to complain about. Because I think it's, it's like, hot. I think it's like 70 some odd degrees here. Yeah. And, um, but like surround, because we're at the beach, it's cooler. And also Pacifica is known for its fog. Oh, so, um, in fact, we have a fog festival. Yeah. So it's usually cool here. It's like knitting weather uh, all year round. Which is we have our own yam brand. <laughs> Can you talk about it? I don't know. It's yam. Oh, oh no! Don't don't show the ugly oh. side. Okay, but the labels are on. I taught side. you nothing. Oh, turn the label. <laughs> talk about it. Talk about it. Oh, this is our yarn. It's eighteen micron merino. Hand dyed and natural dyes comes from a little farm here in the United States, North Carolina, that is milled nearby. And then we have another yarn, which is also fine merino wool, and it, it uses natural dyes as well. And it comes from a different mill, and it's woolen spun, and um, it is so lovely. And I'm so proud of the new yarn. So, um, yeah. Great. And I've been talking for the, like the last two and a half months about how we're getting more of the worsted spun 18 micron merino in, and I've got six new colors that I have developed for this. Um, but the mill has been really, really behind, which sure the color is color. sucks for me. Color but it's fantastic that the mill is doing so well. Yeah. So, um, cause we are in a pandemic. So. We are in a pandemic and it's just a husband and wife Week team. 389. And... Is it really? No. Three... Did you just make that up? <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah. There's 52 weeks in a year. It's well, it's, that would it's be like, like week. What is it? Like 20. I don't know. It's a lot. Oh. <laughs> it's a lot. Um, it's a lot. Anyway. It's a lot. Yeah, so they're doing the best they can, but they're also really busy, and I'm I'm super super happy that they're really busy. Yeah, we're not busy, but we're okay. We're surviving, and we're surviving. Thanks to the good-hearted people who come and shop. Yeah, uh, thank socially you. Socially distance. Yeah, with a mask on. Yeah, at our shop. It has felt really really safe. I mean, we've never been like we we're three years in, and we've never been like super busy unless. We have like a sale or a trunk show. Then we get a lot of people. We're doing some sort of special event. Mm -hmm. Apart from that, it's kind of onesies, twosies. So it's a really safe environment. Very safe environment. You're so hot, aren't you? <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> oh, yeah, I am hot. What, uh, ask me what I've been doing this week. Oh, what have you been doing this week? What have you been doing? Um, well, I don't know. So you put me on the spot now. Um, I've been teaching. <laughs> I've been teaching. <laughs> Yeah, you I had a big coffee. <laughs> I had the world's best coffee maker. Costs a lot of money. You're being very funny today. Um, but um, yeah, I've been teaching kindergarten part time because, well, uh, I mean, full time, full time, full time <laughs> kindergarten with the amazing kindergarten team at Sunset Ridge, which is our school. And um, um, yes, been enjoying the little kiddos. <laughs> Um, this week I'm kind of nervous because I'm teaching what... curriculum this week, oh. kindergarten curriculum. <laughs> so <laughs> that fraction test did not go down well the other day. <laughs> just want to say that. Go on. I just say? was so, like, I've been so impressed. I've kind of been showing it off to a lot of people. Your um, virtual classroom oh, is yeah. the cutest lot of thing I've ever that, seen. Though. Yeah, a lot of teachers are doing that. Though. Yeah, but are, it, but are they as cute as yours probably not yeah. tony made like a little emoji of himself and he has like these various different a lot of rooms. teachers are going yeah i do that i do that because a lot of teachers do that and i got the idea I'm... and i from the teachers that i work with they they showed me theirs but you, and put, I thought, it, but you put it together right yeah it's so cute he has like a mindfulness room where the kids can go in and like 
click on like kitty yoga or click on you know some other kitty activity. exercise yeah some other activity and, and then there's a virtual library where you click on pictures of books and it's me reading the books it's the cutest thing ever i've gone in a couple of times <laughs> it's so cute and then tony's like they're reading like don't let the pigeon drive the bus it's Those really cute books, yeah. and then um what else have you got? You've got the mindfulness room. You've got the, uh, oh, he's got um, a dance room. <laughs> it's oh, yeah. so cute. And I need to um, put a disco ball in there. Yeah, like, you do need a disco play. ball. That'd be really funny. Anyway, he's decked out these rooms. But I th like I'm thinking when I finish rooms. my stint in kindergarten, how yeah. long that's going to last. It was supposed to be this week that it ended, but I'm doing next week as well. Yeah. But I'm going to do a virtual office for kids and teachers to drop in and pick up That'll resources. That'll be super and, cute. You know, Oh, anyway, super, but super that's cute. that's my life at the moment. It's great. Yeah. I'm loving it. I'm loving kindergarten. Oh my god! I wish I told kindergarten. I don't know if you pre-COVID. I don't know whether you would get along with kindergarten if there were actually like physically, you know, the little kids like oh. a, 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 at your okay. at your knees. Oh, yeah. well, I just think it's it's you know it's it's a high like those kids are pretty like they're you know they're pretty like snotty and yeah cal you see through that though cal as a teacher <laughs> anyway what have I you been doing with the vat of what have you been doing before you diss the kindergarten population <laughs> of pacifica what have you been doing <laughs> what have you been doing cal? we need to take a moment to talk about these shoes <laughs> no. <laughs> now hey. my husband has always had quite a sense of fashion he's total brick cool if you ask me and he likes his clothes and I love that he likes his clothes. I like my clothes too. But I, I, this yes. is a little bit of a departure. Hey, there's a, an artist called Caroline Rose. She's yeah. from New York, I think. She's a great yeah. like pop, rap, yeah. funk artist. And I watched a video of hers the other day and she was wearing red Crocs with a tracksuit. I thought it was just the coolest looking thing. And we also watched a film with... Was it someone, ironic? Wasn't or... there a film we watched something the other day where the, one or... of the characters was wearing Crocs? Is it ironic or are Crocs it's coming kind, back? It's kind of ironic. But I'm wearing these Crocs. Are you ready for this? <laughs> <laughs> they should be called Quacks. Because oh, yeah. they look like little ducks. They could. Well done. <laughs> oh, you should talk about your eye as well. That's a cute story since you just showed your eye. Oh. My third eye. This, yeah. Um, well, I was teaching. I, <laughs> I was reading. <laughs> I was reading um, a series of unfortunate events. The cat. Oh, the lights come on. Fine. Yeah. Um, to my kids, which is the Lemony Snicket books, and um, I love Lemony Snicket. And they were so engrossed, and the character Count Olaf. You can identify him in his disguises because he's got an eye tattoo on his ankle. So I sharpied one. I didn't sharpie one. I felt tip penned an eye on my leg and I just scratched my leg like this and the kids saw the eye and they thought that was funny and then one little girl said you should get that tattooed onto your leg and I said is that a dare and she said yeah so I did <laughs> it's not the Count Olaf eye but it's kind of like a it's Victorian, kind of like a Victorian yeah Victorian uh, illustration. Uh, illustration from a medical book yeah but I kind of wish I got their Count Olaf eye now though Oh, but well, no, I'm glad you didn't. Because the kids were like, it's not the Kendo Love Eye. Anyway, those are my Crocs. Kids will tell you like it is. What have you been up to, Cal? <laughs> I don't know if I can follow that. <laughs> Your footwear is quite sensible. Yeah, my footwear is sensible. Yeah, I um, I have a tattoo on my foot. Too. I feel like I should. I, I feel like I should show my foot. I don't know why. Can you get it up I'm there? Feeling, you know, that's a really good question. Let's see if I can. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was One a very ladylike. <laughs> we, have, we have these as well. Oh, yeah. These are... Oh, I think we talked about these before. I have a shark. Our Brazilian air bees. Because got sheep. I have sheep, got yeah. jellyfish. Yeah. I think we've shown oh, our God. tattoos before. Yeah. Little Lots atoms. of atoms. My armpit. Look at that. <laughs> I am sweating. <laughs> Oh my goodness. <laughs> I think we've really gone off the rails on this one. <laughs> what have you been doing, Cal? I thought last episode For the we fifth were time. Nutty. <laughs> what have you been doing? What have you been doing? Oh, well. Rain it in. 
Rain it in. Okay, so we've been doing the Bay Area Fiber Fair, uh -huh. Uh -huh. and we have our little pins, which are super cute. Yeah. I got new um, project bags. Oh, what were you gonna say? We inter we're interviewing someone really interesting today. We so are we? Which we're really, gonna go really to really now, are. I think. Yeah, she's amazing. So we can amazing. go and calm down, cool down before we show off our products. <laughs> Sorry if we've been a bit much. <laughs> yeah. But um. It's a three-day weekend as it well. It's a three-day weekend. Labor Day weekend when yeah. we're filming this, and we're very yeah. excited. And my shop is shut on Mondays and Tuesdays, so actually we're going to be able to enjoy Each other's the Monday, company. which will be great. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but now let's go over to our interview. Yeah, Who is she? So she's a Sarah, and it's she's a Sarah. Wild Oat Hollow. Wild Oat Hollow. And she and uh, she she and her family run uh, a farm I know. Uh, not too far away. And she's a wonderful person, and I have her yarn, which I think I've showed to you before, and yeah. I'll show it to you again after, after. Uh, the interview. And I'm also going to be carrying a whole bunch of her uh, products. She makes like these amazing hand creams that are really good for like contact dermatitis or eczema, and they're utilizing the. Um, uh, like lanolin and byproducts of uh, goat milk, so on and so forth. And yeah, byproducts. Yeah. <laughs> What's her name? Sarah. Sarah. Of course, Sarah. I knew that. Sarah. And I met Just her. Dropped out of my head for a second. Sorry, at a, Sarah. At a fiber shed event. And um, I think I mentioned last episode as well that I'm now an official fiber shed member. So I'm really excited about that. Very cool so, lady indeed. You're going to so love her. Cool. Let's meet her next. Okay. <gasps> Here she comes. Here she comes. <laughs> Hi, Sarah. Hey, Sarah. Hi. Sit down. Yeah, Hi. come in. Come in. <laughs> Hi. 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 Um, thank you for having me. Thank you for coming. This yeah. is so exciting. You are the first farmer. Oh, yay. That we um, have ever had on our little um, video blog. And um, uh, for everybody, this is Sarah. And Sarah owns Wild Oat Hollow and I have some of her Esmeralda yarn in the shop and we're just in the process of getting a whole bunch of other products that um, are, uh, well, you make from the lanolin and anyway, you tell everybody about you and yes. a little bit about Wild Oat Hollow. <laughs> okay, yes. Um, so Wild Oat Hollow is my farm um, and it's a relatively small farm and, and I, you know, for California speaking. Um, and the way I kind of grew it was by creating a community grazing cooperative in which I go and assist my neighbors who are elderly with grazing to for fire abatement and community resiliency and carbon farming to try to improve the aesthetics of their property, improve clumping grasses, and also just reduce their fire risk. Because um, as people have these properties in these rural residential neighborhoods, as those communities are aging, it becomes prohibitive to manage them. And I wanted more sheep, so I'm like, hey, I just started knocking on neighbors' doors, going up and meeting people and say, hey, I got sheep, I can bring them right over. We walk them all down the roads to people's houses, taking them from house to house to house, and they provide these services. And some of my sheep are quite friendly, so the neighbors get to go out and pet sheep and kind of reconnect to the animals and the land through that as well, and understand how the sheep work and get to know natural fiber products. And so that's kind of my wild out hollow and my vision there. And then the sub company is the dandelion skincare which you're you're just adding to your shop as well which i'm really excited about for everyone to try and that started out just i was making soaps and being in the farming industry and talking to a lot of my farmers who produce meat animals they were paying massive amounts of money to throw away animal fat because people don't want animal fat and one pig will produce 40 to 80 pounds of fat per pig and one cow, at least that as well. And because nobody wanted it, it was a byproduct that they had to pay to throw away. And that felt really, really wasteful to me. So even if you're a vegetarian, you don't eat meat, I, I just, I didn't want to see animals go to waste, any part of them. Yeah. So I started to go around and purchase the fat from local farmers that were practicing carbon farming methods, improving the soil, and rendered it and started making the goat milk soap with that, that, that fat that would have been thrown away turned into a really nice product. And I got local olive oil from some local producers here in the county and uh, up by um, Woodland by Valley Oak Wool Mill, which is the one who mills my wool as well. 
<laughs> so out there, there's another little um, olive oil mill. What I do is I buy their kind of, you'd call it kind of sludgy end part that people don't necessarily want to consume because it's kind of sticky, but it makes great soap. So the soap has local olive oil, local byproduct fat that instead of being thrown away goes into soap and then goat milk from my dairy goat. And same with the, the cream, I make a face and body cream. And I got into that because I could never find a cream that I liked to the forward and didn't either felt like I was putting water on or it felt really greasy. So I started making my own and the, bot, the butter in it is ghee. So it's either ghee from my goats or I buy um, organic, ancient organics, which is another really well done ghee that local in, in my community. And a friend of mine makes local hydrosols, plant-based hydrosols, and I put those in there. And there's lanolin in there, which is great for your skin, and beeswax, and then olive oil, which I soak. I'm also an herbalist, so I soaked olive oil in a bunch of herbs for six weeks. So this cream is very healing. It can go on damaged skin. It can go on burns. It can go on eczema. It will really soothe and take care of your skin as well as being completely organic and safe to use on every part of your body. So that's kind of the yeah. focus of my I'm product. Sorry. Yeah. Well, I bought some when, when oh, at the met. event. Yeah. And I have really, really sensitive skin. Like mm -hmm. I get contact dermatitis from just about everything. In fact, I have a little bit right now. And yeah. I found uh, the lotion that I got to be just phenomenal. Yeah. It's really great. It's yeah. very, very healing. So Good, yes. I, I, I struggle with that. Mm -hmm. So yes. that's why I'm super excited about having it in the shop good good yeah so it's 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 a sustainable you know it's local it's sustainable it's in, i purchased from all other local businesses so we just keep funneling the support of local businesses through these products and then you having it in your shop and yeah i find it too like it, the few times i've gotten a facial in my life i even went to our organic places they're like real, real gentle my skin was like screaming at me afterwards so my skin does not like any sort of rough treatment so i use that cream twice a day on my face and it's really kind to the skin mm. yeah and i'm glad you liked it i yeah i love it i can't wait to get it in the shop yay so how did you get into this what was your journey from beginning to um i that's that's a good question i i always always loved animals and a lot of my so I grew up in suburbia um, Iowa Cedar Rapids Iowa but I always wanted a horse so I bought a horse when I was 12 and I'd ride my bike five miles each way to my horse and you know because I had to board it but I also came with you know as an environmentalist and a conservationist and really feeling this need with uh, you know the climate kind of seeming to being dismantled to want to heal it. And when I learned how ruminants, who are my love, which ruminants are the split, for those who don't know, the split hooved animals with three stomachs are ruminants, that proper management of grazing them is one of the best ways to sequester carbon into our soil out of our atmosphere. atmosphere. And they also produce milk and fiber that is sustainable, can be composted, it's against your skin soft. So these, this brilliant, it was a amazing way for me to combine my passions of like the animal management, animal husbandry, and a conservation environmental action all in one and also being able to do community building. So I always knew I wanted it. It just took me a while to find land, as you can imagine, in California. It's yeah. Land piece is a big, big problem. So I did find this small little place and I jumped on it and then I'm able to grow through assisting the neighbors as well. That's kind of how I came to it with both those passions. And we met at a fiber shed event, and yep. I finally became a member. Yay! So I'm I'm official. Yeah, that's exciting. <laughs> I'm under the artist category because yeah, of okay. natural dyeing that I do because yeah. I don't yet produce yarn in California. But okay. I reached out to um, the mill in Ukiah, and I might ask you mm -hmm. for the mill details of the mill that you're using as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and that's my ambition. Great. Uh, have a yeah, I use the Ukiah mill as well. Oh, okay. They they do better with the fine wools. So like I think you probably use a, a, a finer low micron count. Ukiah has the carding equipment and stuff for fine. So they're probably the mill you'll use. But so I use them when I'm processing my merino and my really fine stuff. And what um, the Valley Oak wool mill, Markel's owner, again, both really local, small owned. I know the owners both intimately and I love that connection like you and I have as well. Um, and she does a lot of my medium, you know, when I cross in like Marina with Wensleydale, that's not a problem for her, but she can't do a straight Marina or a straight, like really fine. 
Um, and now the Ukiah mill's spinning too. So for a while they couldn't spin, they, you know, it's a, a lot to invest in all that equipment and get it figured out. So now they're making yarn as well. So it's very exciting. Yeah, I'm, I'm really excited. I'm hoping that that will be something that will, you know, propel me forward too, because that was always my hope was yeah. that I would be able to, I was so inspired by, I, I, and I can't even remember, uh, it was an interview with the founder of the Fiber Shed Movement, and she basically was telling about her journey and why she did it, and um, I was so moved by it that I started, you know, you, you know what it's like, you start going down the rabbit hole, yeah. and change <laughs> you live. And um, as, a, as a yarn maker and also somebody who has a shop and a bunch of different yarns from different places, I use a lot of, um, not so much the um, uh, physicality, but ensuring that all of my uh, yarns are ethical dye practices. They're raising the animals in an ethical manner and mm -hmm. that, um, uh, you know, as low a carbon footprint as I can create and still have the variety is kind of my aim. I'm That's not perfect by any stretch of the imagination. Mm -hmm. I have super wash in here, which mm -hmm. is my like compromise, but I yeah. make sure that it's coming from a place that's, you know, managing it properly. But yeah, that's I would, the critical piece. And, and that's great because then those people out trying to do carbon farming with their sheep get the support of actually someone purchasing that fiber and that keeps them at doing what they're doing. So that's important. That's an important piece. Yeah, Tell great. Us about what you're wearing. Oh yeah, this is my. I you know Zoom doesn't is not show things as well as it is, but all of my yarn. You have Esmeralda. All of my yarn is named after one of the animals in my flock. It's a primary. Their flock, their fleece is one of the primary parts to the fiber. So this is my Uno yarn. This is the white Uno yarn. It's a single ply. We plied it for this because the other yarn is plied and it's really soft. Uno's a blend. He's my, one of my fiber weathers and he's a blend of Merino, Cormo, Lincoln, and Wensleydale. Very soft, very shiny wool and I added some alpaca to it as well from a friend and it's really against your skin soft so that's the collar. And the other one is my Zorro which was Zorro was our llama who we lost a couple years ago sadly. We tried our best to save him but he died of polio believe it or not. One wow. Of them. So when those kind of animals, polio is stress-induced. It's like a virus that'll come up from stress indu induction, and we don't really know what stressed him out, but he led to that, and we tried to treat him, but we lost him anyways. But um, he, I have his yarn, I have his sweater, and I get to wear him for the rest of my life because I have his fiber on me. And so this is a Zorro yarn, and it's just a beautiful blend. I, I feel like I like to do a lot of my artistry. I do always make some white yarn, especially for dyers. So I have some really nice high luster white yarns, but I also like to make blend different colored fleeces and make different colored yarn from just natural fleece blending. It's really fun to do that. So the Zorro and the Poppy yarn are kind of blends of a lot of different colors. So, so that's kind of, yeah. So this is one of my sweaters and I love it. I love it's it. It's nice to wear your own animals, you know, there's something really <laughs> nice about that. <laughs> I have my own um, yarn on. It's not my own animals, but. <laughs> yeah, same thing. <laughs> Um, almost. You're you're oh, yeah. living, you're living the full dream. <laughs> I'm just taking a tiny little bite. Right. Um, you know, with the the fires right now, I was actually worried. I wasn't sure, like, exactly how close you were because we're we're really close here, mm -hmm. but we're not in in. We haven't been evacuated. We're not in danger. Yeah, that's but, how we. That's how I am too. Okay. So. Um, the, the Napa fire has been pretty well contained. Um, and that's kind of south, that's kind of east of me. And then the Sonoma County fire, which is the bigger one, which is burning out on the west coast where there's a lot of fuel, is northwest of me. And it would have to come all the way across the county to get to me. So um, even though there's kind of fires all around, we are safe. And um, I kind of live in a nice, area as far as being able to fight fires because Penn Grove where I live is very low, a low valley. We're not in the hills. It's either well well grazed for the most part, a lot of cattle, a lot of sheep or um, vineyards. So mm -hmm. it would be, it's easier to kind of stop the fires coming to us. So we are mostly affected by the smoke at this point and concerned for our friends who have been evacuated from areas. Yeah. yeah. And we always take animals. Last year we had Several families come and stay on the farm. We have a historic round barn and some people stayed out there and we have a cottage and people stayed there. And then we had a bunch of sheep and goats come as well. So we always are able to 
create space when people have to evacuate. We always try to be a place where people can come be safe. That's amazing. Yeah. I always worry about the animals so much. Yes, it's hard. It's hard. We had to evacuate 2017 and and I didn't I don't have enough trailers to move all my animals because I move them mostly on the hoof. And I had to decide who came with us and who left I left behind. It was a horrible, I mean it was like deciding who was gonna live and who was gonna die. Luckily we didn't burn and everybody lived, but it was a really tough place to be with the fires, yeah. So you grew no, up in safe. Iowa, did you say? You grew up in Iowa? Yeah. I grew up in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. I'm a Midwest transport. Um, and my aunt, I kind of always grew up with animals. We always had dogs and cats and my aunt and uncle had a big orchard in Indiana and I'd spend summers there and she had horses and cows and goats and my, my cousin and I would just get on the horses bareback and we'd be gone all day and we'd live on apples and blackberries and it was, it was, a, it was a fun life, you know. Um, and everything is more open there. There's no fencing, very little fencing. There's a lot less livestock. Um, so, and then I said, let's see, I moved here about 18 years ago, 18 years ago. And I had some friends that were living in Sebastopol and I just kind of packed up my truck and drove out with two dogs and a kitten that came out of a dumpster at one of our gas station stops. <laughs> I was fueling up and I had these two dogs on a leash and this kitten runs right up to us. And I picked it up and it came out of the dumpster and was covered in dirt and fleas. And we're like, well, you're coming with us too. So he came with us out to California as well. That's, that's how I travel. <laughs> Did you come up with a name Wild um, Wild Oat Hollow, or was that? Already yeah, I did um, because the 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 property we're on and most of the surrounding properties are not, not so much anymore through my grazing, but they're full filled with the wild oat, which is a annual grass that was brought here by the Spaniards. It was not here before the white people came. Before the white people came, it was a lot of clumping grasses, the native clumping grasses. And the annuals just outcompete them. So the wild oat grows really fast and drowns out everything below them. So with my grazing, I've, I've, I've grazed out most of the oat on my property, but it's still called wild oat hollow because that's what it was almost completely when we got here. So we're looking to try to graze and bring back those clumping grasses, but we named it after the way it looked when, or I named it after the way it looked when we first got here, which was a lot of wild oat. And when you were little, what did you want to, what did you want to be when you grew up? I, I want to be a veterinarian. Okay. That was my dream always as when I was little. I think in my mind, that was the only way to be with, an, work with animals in your life, you know? So, um, and now as, as, you know, having a farm and livestock, I do so much veterinary work on my own. You know, I do, you do a lot of your own veterinary care, so, and work with the veterinarians, but I'm very happy with what I'm doing now but yeah I always wanted to be a veterinarian that was my dream as a kid. Tell us a little bit about like I think there are so many people who are involved in the yarn industry who dream about kind of you know having a farm and living the life that you're living. Tell us kind of what your your typical day is like because I'm sure it's a lot. It's a lot. <laughs> um, you know it's funny because I do have some some friends you know who especially with COVID or, or their teachers in the summer, they're like, yeah, I got up at 10 a.m. this morning. I'm like, yeah, you can't do that on a farm. <laughs> it doesn't work that way. So because I have dairy animals too, that adds to the, the, the consistency of workload. So every morning at six, I milk the goats. I do really make sure that I make my workload as easy as possible. So all my dairy goats are milked once a day. I don't do twice a day milking. I leave the babies with the moms. They have a very good connection. All my animals are raised by their moms, even my chickens. Like I don't, I don't parent, I only parent my children. They, they get to parent their children. And then, um, so with the babies on the moms, I can milk them once a day. And then you just put the babies in a stall next to them at night and milk, get the milk in the morning and then they're with their moms all day. So it's just, I do every, everything I do is to, tr you know, ha you always have to do work, but to make sure it's as easy as possible. That's part of the work. So I get up and I milk. Then we have four guard dogs. We've had issues with lions killing sheep this year, so we might even have to get more guard dogs. Um, the lions and coyotes are hard to manage. You know, it's, it's, it's a hard thing to manage. So we have four guard dogs. So after I milk, I bring the dogs in and feed them. So they get fed once a day. And, and this time of year, I'm feeding hay. In the winter, there's no hay need because we have grass. Um, and depending upon if the sheep are home or out, I may be moving sheep. So I have portable electric fencing that I carry around and I set up new fencing and move the sheep to a new place or walk them down the road to a neighbor's house. 
Um, so that's that day. And then some, we do raise about four pigs a year. And so it depends upon if they're here, there's a little more work with feeding and sharing for the pigs. When they're not here, it's a little less work. And the chickens get fed and then everybody kind of is loose and running around the whole day. And then there's sometimes some midday chores. We have a massive garden and orchard too. So we have to do harvesting, we've been canning potatoes. On my, I mean, I only own two acres, but I graze probably about 10 or 15. But on my two acres, we produce about 75% of our food between dairy, eggs, fruit and vegetables. So there's all that kind of caretaking of the food production. Um, and then at the end of the day, there's bringing the animals into the corrals and getting the dogs out with them. So they have the best protection at night and feeling like everybody's as locked up as safe as possible. And then you go to bed and wake up the next morning and do it again. But it's delightful for me to be on up on my feet, moving out and about. That's a way happier place for me. When my sheep are out grazing, they, they're about a mile up the road, and my horses are about a mile up the road at another neighbor's house. And so when everybody's out, I'm often walking about six to seven miles a day just to go check on everybody, fill up water, make sure they're doing things. So there's just a lot of walking and moving, and but that also gives me an opportunity because I'm rural residential. As I'm moving to go see the sheep and the horses, I'm saying hello and chatting with neighbors, and there's that nice social community get effect that I get throughout my day as well. So I'm not... Um, as isolated as the big ranchers are, where they're out working all day. I have a friend who has like 2,000 acres. She doesn't see anybody for days. <laughs> I think she likes it that way, but I, I'm a little too chatty. I like to say hello to my neighbors. That's who you talk to. Um, so it's a very full life. It's it's a lot of outdoor. It feels very healthy and active, and it, it it's a lot of physical work. So sometimes hands will hurt at the end of the day or the shoulders will hurt from carrying fences, but it's a nice life. Yeah. It sounds amazing. Yeah. <laughs> and I definitely, once COVID's over, um, I'll go back to doing farm tours and farm visits. I do teach soap and lotion, soap and lotion making classes, and I have a historic round barn on the property. So we're in there doing the classes, and I make goat milk chai from scratch. I have a friend who's from India that showed me how to make chai. And I have that available. And then during our break, we go out and pet the baby goats and the sheep. And people, our, my, a lot of my sheep are quite friendly, so you can really pet them and get in the fiber and feel what it feels like on the sheep. I had threatened like when we when we had first met at that event <laughs> that I was going to organize a little tour and bring everybody up and I, I still haven't done it but it is on my top to-do list. Yeah. It is over and things are safe. It'll be yeah, so Yeah when we can all get together and not have to worry about it let's do it because you know in the round bar we can even have a little lunch you know a little catered farm table lunch and people can get to know we can even walk the neighborhood and see all the different fields they go to and the clumping grasses that have come like whatever people want to see or they can just go out and pet the sheep for an hour if that's what they want to do too <laughs> all of the above that would right, be exactly. absolutely amazing yeah okay. good so we ask everybody if you had to eat one food over mm -hmm. and over and over and over again what would you choose that's a good question that is so hard because i <laughs> eat so seasonally you know um, right now, um, the thing that I'm eating almost every day, and I'll just stick with it because I could eat it every day, is gazpacho. I mm. love gazpacho. I just pick what I have in the garden, blend it together with a little olive oil, and I eat that pretty much every day right now. So that's definitely something I could eat every day if I had to. And it can change through the seasons. <laughs> What's the, the next fun question? What's the last piece of music you listen to? Um... The last, like just yesterday, I was listening to some Leonard Cohen. I love Leonard Cohen and I love French jazz. So when I'm making my soaps in motion, I put on French jazz. And when I'm coming down at the end of the day or doing bookkeeping, I listen to Leonard Cohen a lot. So those are my two most common favorite music I'm listening to right now. Nice. Yeah. And what is your favorite color? Red. Oh. I'm a fire girl, like your hair. <laughs> <laughs> He's a he's a red lover I as like well. Red. That's his favorite too. Yeah, I love red. Yeah. I, I, and I love I can wear like bright red clothes. Like I I can the bold colors I really like. Yeah. I do like red. Yeah. I, I'm sorry. Go on. Oh. I was gonna say with your natural dye classes, pokeberry. Have you ever done pokeberry? That makes incredible reds. Yeah. It's really a great red dye, natural red dye that you can get that bright vibrant color. I love it. Yeah. You were um, saying you were denied, you were oh, red denied. No, go ahead, sure. Well, when, I was yeah. in, when I was the equivalent of, say, kindergarten, I remember saying I like red, and this girl made fun of me for saying I like red, because everyone likes red. So I said blue for, like, 
20 years <laughs> later. And then eventually I was like, the only reason I don't say I like red is because of that girl and remember her full name and everything. I'm not going to name her on the internet. But. Isn't that amazing how those things in childhood can affect us? Yeah. And crazy. I, I just embraced red all of a sudden, so I love red. Anyway. Yeah. Where's red? Yeah. What yeah. is your most annoying habit? Um, probably what I just did, interrupting people. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard on Zoom, though. It's difficult. <laughs> yeah. But you're, you're forgiven. I get a little exuberant in a conversation. I'll be like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I, I could, and some people, like you and I would probably just move through it like no big deal, where some people just shut them down, you know, so I always have to try to calm my excitement if I'm with somebody that needs that space, you know, because I get a little too much. That's me. Yeah. <laughs> I got excited. <laughs> me too. I totally get it. <laughs> and it's not that I'm not listening to the other person. I'm totally actively, like, I'm more, I'm, I'm super engaged. I just yeah. get really excited and, you know, want to, want to converse and yeah. so on and so forth. Do it's you almost like I need a little notebook to be like, oh my God, that's what I want to say, but I just write it down because otherwise I'm going to interrupt this person, you know? <laughs> Well, the next time we get together and we're not on Zoom and we're not doing an interview, we're just going to, we're going to go. All right. Sounds good. <laughs> Fine. Sounds good. Because people who are like us, we don't care. We just keep on going. Like, it's just a natural conversation for us, you know? Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. So do you have a child appropriate joke? Oh, yes, I do. I actually, it had to be, it had to be about sheep. Okay. And the joke is, what do you call a sheep on steroids? What? A woolly mammoth. <laughs> there's my sheep joke for you <laughs> very good very good <laughs> oh sarah thank you so, yes, so thank so you much. and i am working I on wait to visit you we're gonna do it we're, we're so it. doing it you yeah. might yeah. First, dream a little bit. you might be first on our list yeah let's do it not. <laughs> yeah, because great, because you know, like I have friendly animals that love attention. There's even chickens you can pit up, pick up and pet if you like chickens. You know, the school had chickens. And we have a great round bar, and we'll just have a nice little lunch in there, and everybody can enjoy the whole farm. Yay! And I can meet your big, family. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and we'll have big dogs, so everybody needs to become. The big dogs are around, very friendly, very kind, but doing a good um, job. Yeah, I didn't big. Yeah. yeah. We're all be about animals, so we awesome. love them. Most um, people who like it want to come to a farm are okay with animals, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds great. We'll plan it. Yeah, and we'll have a good lunch, and we'll just have fun. Yay. Okay. And um, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Nice to see you again. Nice, nice to see you. Oh, yeah, virtually. Bye. Bye, Sarah. Bye. Bye. Bye, Sarah. Bye, Sarah. Great seeing you. Can't wait to come to the farm post COVID. Oh yeah, to stroke yeah. those sheep and goats. <laughs> and we're gonna we're gonna have the best time when we go yeah. there. Isn't she's Sarah there. absolutely lovely? She's still there. And I love what she's doing for she's the earth. Still. And you know, we've had a lot of wildfires here. A yeah. lot of fires, and they're still fires. fighting them. Still fighting the nearest think, one, yeah. Yeah, there's, and it's it's not even 50% contained yet. Some of the other um, fires are like 80%, 90%, but um, nevertheless, they're... The CZU. Yeah, so, um, you know, in addition to just, you know, doing the right thing in terms of her farming practices, also, she's helping with regard to the fire abatement. So yeah. that's really cool and very uh, near and dear to our hearts. And that's a yarn. Yeah, this is w just one of one of the yarns that she does. It's Esmeralda. I think I've shown it to you all before. There's still like little bits of the farm in there, um, yeah. which is just half awesome. a tractor I love in there somewhere. That. <laughs> yeah, I love that so much. And this is made from um, Esmeralda and Poppy and um, uh, one of the alpacas so blended. soft really it's soft really and squishy. soft yeah and it's just the natural color so uh it's kind of like a sport DK, is that the right? color of the sheep yeah well it's a, it's the color that's created through is the blending goat? of two of the sheep and, and the alpaca two sheep and an alpaca <laughs> two sheep and there's a joke in there somewhere but Anyway. Yeah, don't look that way. No, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about stuff before we get arrested. Okay. Okay. So, um. <laughs> Go on. We've had some delivery. We 
if you've seen on Instagram, <laughs> Kelly's amazing box opening, <laughs> which Where barely had the box in it, but <laughs> she did a good, it was great, it was good. It's hard, it's, it's hard to get the angle when you're by it's yourself. It's hard to film a box. <laughs> it's hard. So, but it contained Dragon Horde. It did, it did. Good friend and Tristan, she's all the way wonderful. from Idaho, who <laughs> loves sharks. Just want to say that. Is it Idaho? She's from Utah. <laughs> you know that. I know. So, she yeah, she is so absolutely adorable. We love her. And we love her as a person. She's our friend. But... She likes watching TV on the couch on a Saturday night. <laughs> That's yeah, <no>. us. <laughs> <laughs> One of us. Uh, and she likes to laugh and all that good yeah. stuff. Mm. And she has a really good sense of humor. And, but... Outside of the fact that we adore her as a human, um, she makes great products. She makes great Sorry, I'm yarn. The sentences. She does. She really does. And her color is just spectacular. And she has this new Agatha uh, collection, and I'm so thrilled to have it in the shop. And this yeah, this is the Goblin Slub. So okay. isn't that so cool? And I've seen a number of different um, sweaters made in the uh, Goblin Slub held together with mohair, and that looks really, really pretty. You get that kind of like, um, you know, um, sort of bumpy, furry texture, and it's really beautiful. Do you want to read out the names of those so people can see? <laughs> These hanks, can so see? funny. Okay, this one's called Dorcas. Dorcas, which apparently I have pronounced correctly. I have not seen the um the show that these are inspired by but we plan on watching it uh tomorrow a this is bit. roses or roses <laughs> <laughs> this is roses. thorns oh, i get a theme there roses thorns this is prudence one of my favorite beatles songs no relation to um, the Beatles songs. No, no, okay, no, no, no. and then we have Sorry, um, lore fingering, which is so super soft. Lots of fingering going on. Super soft. Thorns again. Oh. Dorcas. Agatha. I like that one. Isn't that stunning? You should have your hair colored like that. That's really cool. That kind of green. Oh, thing. that would be and cool. Prudence. You know, I did try to embrace my age and get a streak. I was gonna get like a I gray streak, it. but streak, but it ended up like a stray Greek. Yeah, <laughs> gray streak. <laughs> it ended up just being like kind of blonde. And what's been so weird is as I'm aging, my hair is like, it, you know, it's going from red to it's like a dark. You know, my natural color is a dark red. But it's gone to like almost black and white. Really? It's like, yeah, can't you see those roots? They, recently I've noticed they're just getting so dark. They are dark. Yeah, it's getting really dark. They're getting dark. Kelly Button. So. <laughs> um, and what about this roving? Oh, it's not roving. No, ah. it's Pegasus mohair. That's and those prudence. Are a couple examples of the mohair. Just. Agatha. Soft as heaven. <laughs> it's very soft. <laughs> Let me squish that. Yeah, you haven't done any squishing. I have today. done squishing actually. Have you? Yeah, I've been squishing. Have you? And Dorcas. And Dorcas. You squish that Dorcas. <laughs> <laughs> so pretty. That's pretty. If I had to choose one, if I had okay, to buy yeah. one, okay, yeah. which I'm not okay. going to do. I see. This happened to you yesterday, or not yesterday, but the um, last week when we did this. Yeah, I think this you one. You got attached to that Dorcas. You got attached prudence. to a Mad Tosh color. Attached. Yeah, I did. I I think this is happening. I think this is beginning to happen. But look, this is the so I, I don't know. I feel the and I need feel to the hold. feel the urge. <sighs> I've arrived in a box. Well, that and much more. And much more. Um, yeah. And a card. So and a card. Yeah, it's a Christmas card. A Christmas card. <laughs> really cute but that's the show for today thank you for joining us um next week we'll have another fun packed show it'll be show 18 18 oh like a legal adult it'll be a legal show <laughs> not allowed enough to drink but old enough to go to jail and vote and vote
Please vote. Speaking of which, please vote. Yeah. We should please have vote. our we should have had our purple bandana on. Yeah. I've been thinking that we should have been wearing our purple bandana. As, so hot in a purple bandana. You look you you look pretty darn cute in that I purple do. bandana. I do. Yeah. Especially so. with these shoes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Bye. See you next week. Bye.